Okay, so we're in After Effects. We're going to be using a filter under the Time drop-down. We're looking at Time Displacement. So, this piece of footage that I've got, this mirror clip move, I'm just going to open up this footage now and show you what we've got in here. So, this is just a short clip and the car goes past and it fades into blue. So, I've done all that as one piece of footage. So, if you can get yourself some footage similar to that sort of uh, type right so what we need to do first of all is we're going to create a composition so I'm going to drag that onto the new comp button here and as you can see fades to blue nicely right so to get this to work uh, what we need is uh, to apply the filter. So we're looking for time displacement. So you'll find it under the effect list. Now it automatically assumes that the displacement layer that it's going to use is the same uh, layer that we've applied the effect to. Now, as you can see, it gets a little bit messy when you do that, and that's not the effect that we're after. So you can see time displacement layer there, it's looking at the wrong layer. We need a grayscale value in here, not the actual image itself, before we mess around with any of these other settings. So that's what we're gonna do first of all. We're gonna create ourselves a, a grayscale, a piece of grayscale footage within this document. And we want to use something that's the same sort of size. So 720416, same size, and um, <clears throat> frame rate's not too important. Uh, you definitely want the same size. So I'm going to create a new composition. So feed in here the 720 dimensions. And I'm going to call it Mr. Gray. Okay, and the duration, as I said, so long as it's longer than the timeline, that will be okay. So we just key in here five seconds. Okay, so that's all set up. We click OK now. And next, what I'm going to do to create this grayscale. Uh, I want a gradient, so I'm going to use the rectangle tool. I mean, there's, there's, there's other ways of creating gradients, but I'm just doing it this way. And uh, shape layer, and we're going to apply gradient to that. So I go in, click on fill options, and create a simple gradient fill. There we go. So uh, gradient fill. Don't need the stroke on that, so I'm going to get rid of the stroke. And if I switch now uh, with the gradient still live to the um, uh, little selection arrow here, I can move that gradient around. So I can move these dots around and create a gradient. Okay. Now remember what's going to happen here. It's going to displace the playback of the video using this grayscale uh, component. So if I make the grayscale component posturized or posturized, then it will um, it will affect the video in the areas that are posturized and it will step the video so we get steps so if i go to uh, stylize posturize posturize how do you pronounce that there you go so that's the effect what we're after so the video will play back at different speeds it'll be offset depending on this grayscale map that we've generated here. Now you can use any uh, black and white or grayscale map. So long as it's got tints of gray in there, you will see the video being played at a slightly uh, offset um, time. So now we can go back in and what we need to do is feed it into the time displacement layer. Now at the moment, you'll see that's blank. If we drag the gray uh, composition into the timeline, Okay, now it becomes visible, so drag it in there, like this, drag from project panel onto the timeline, make sure that it's on the timeline, 
we don't need to actually see it. We can switch the visibility off. So I'm going to come down to the eyeball and disable the eyeball, switch that off. Right now, I'm going to go back to the mirror clip layer. And this time, under time displacement layer, we should now get the option of choosing a different layer. So now I can use the grayscale map. And you can see straight away the result. Looks an almost like glass. So it's playing the video back de dependent on that grayscale values. So uh, black would be ahead of white. So white would play slightly behind the black. And you can control all those settings in the filter. So you'll see the max displacement time, etc., etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tweak the grayscale here. I want it to actually go the other way around. So um, I'm going back in. I select the dots, switch them around. Here we go. Okay, so now back to the original composition. And you can now see that the offset is the other way around. So we see a blue tint appearing from the right rather than from the left. Okay, so yeah, bingo. Jobs are good. Now the thing I like doing here is adding some text because this works very well like a, a title screen. Um, you know, if you've got a section of video coming up and you want to slide some titles in just using a bit of funky video. So uh, you can like just add a text layer in. I'll show you what I mean. So any sort of heading would do. And rotate that, position it. Pick a nice DIN font. I'm going to scale that up a little bit now. Slightly out, looks like it's a 61 degree of this. Nope, minus 61. Okay, we scale that down a little bit. Here you go. And we could even animate that on if I press P for position. that text down a little bit here and now we can slide that text in and you've now got a nice page that could be the setup for the break of a video or top end of the video so there you have it so in addition to using After Effects I also use Cinema 4D 3D software package and I use a, a website called CG Trader to sell my 3D models. So if you're ever looking for any uh, assets like mannequins or a dynamic fishing rod for your projects, then stop by CG Trader and have a quick look at some of these models. Maybe you might find some of these quite useful. Maybe you need a sheeple in your project or some mannequins or maybe even a cute dog. Finally, if you want to follow me on YouTube, you will find me under Bendale TV. And I've got several tutorials already on there for both After Effects and Cinema 4D. So uh, good luck and thank you for watching.